So we're going to look at traction control and stability control. The very subtle differences between these two safety systems on your car. We're going to look at the pros and cons of each of them. The many different types of stability control there is out there. We're also going to look at what is oversteer and what is understeer, which is more beneficial and what are the advantages and disadvantages of having these characteristics in your car's handling. And finally, we're going to look at how to actually turn these control systems off because in a lot of cars, you think you've turned them off, but actually you haven't. So what is the difference between stability control and traction control? And do you need them? And we're going to show you how to actually turn these off in your car, because a lot of people think they've turned it off, but actually they haven't. It's still active in the background. We're going to dissect this topic and help you to get to grips with the dynamics of car handling and car cornering. So oversteer and understeer, you hear those terms thrown around all the time, but what do they actually mean? Well, we take, first of all, the most common thing that's built into modern cars, particularly the front wheel drive car, and that's understeer. So as you're going around a bend, you're steering the car, and understeer means that the car takes a wider trajectory than you would expect. So it tends to go wide. So why on earth would the manufacturer build that in? Well, it's safer than the other option of oversteer. It's easier to control a car that's in a state of understeer than it would be if it was oversteering. So if you're an inexperienced driver, it makes a lot of sense to build that into a car. It's safer, it's what most everyday people can cope with. So oversteer is what we see in the movies. That's where the back of the car goes wide. So the nose of the car on the corner would turn in sharper than you would expect. So you see that in the movies all the time and in video games and it looks really cool and drifters rely on it. But actually it is very, very hard to control. The amount of throttle that you use can make a big difference into how the car turns out and how it oversteers and if you don't count to steer at the front the correct amount and at the correct time the car will just spin out and spin out of control which is quite dangerous to have that in a car that is in the hands of an inexperienced driver so you will typically find cars that are rear wheel drive are more prone to oversteer the power is coming from the back of the car and it tends to be that back of the car that loses traction far before the front. So various cars traction control systems and stability control systems can address both of those and maintain its cornering trajectory as best you can. So traction control cuts in when the wheels lose traction. So for most cars it will employ the brakes to lock the wheel as it spins which actually robs you of power and forward momentum. Your brakes keep cutting in to keep the wheels turning but that does mean you don't lose traction so if you were rubbish at regulating the throttle and you just put your foot down straight away and you wanted the fastest time possible without any consideration, traction control does a pretty good job. The more advanced systems control the differential to make sure the power goes to the wheels that it's needed at most. So if a wheel is slipping, it'll divert more power to the wheels that have got grip and it will slow up the rate of spin on the wheel that's slipping just to allow you to maintain more traction. But the they're quite exotic traction control systems and you tend to find those on the quattros and the more advanced cars. So for most cars, particularly the front wheel drive cars, your traction control is pretty much tied into your brake system. Stability control is slightly different because it affects the car's stability while cornering. So it's looking at the dynamic loads that the car is under. And if it determines that the car is about to spin out or you're about to lose control, it will apply the brakes in such a way or it will divert power to the wheels in such a way as to prevent that from happening to keep the car on the trajectory that the driver wants it to be on. So it's very subtle, it makes a big difference, it's a really good safety feature particularly for most drivers that aren't particularly experienced. So in adverse weather conditions in the wet you can be caught out very quickly with the car spinning out of control and the stability control can make a big difference in those situations so it's certainly a good idea 
idea to leave that on all of the time. There's various different grades of stability control as well. There's anti-roll, which prevents the car from rolling over. So if it detects that two wheels have come off the ground, it will generally lock the other wheels that are on the ground and try and get the car to flip back onto the ground. The more complex systems can actually push a car around a corner much more effectively. I had a Audi A4 Quattro and in the snow it would practically corner like there is no snow there at all. It was incredible just the way the traction control system kicked in and the stability control and just kept the car performing as you would expect it. You've got to remember that braking is always a no-no when it comes to snow and ice so that can be a big problem. But there are some situations where you'd want to turn off the traction control. So if you were on gravel or if you were on snow and ice and the car was slipping pretty much all of the time you just wouldn't make any forward progress at all with the traction control on. You're much better shutting it off and just regulating the traction with your throttle and controlling it yourself. So applying light throttle, pulling away in slightly higher gears can also make a big difference to getting you out of a snowy icy patch that you're stuck in. So most cars have got a little button on the dashboard that you press to disable the traction control or the stability control. So in this example I'm just disabled it but actually the stability control is still active. I've only disabled the traction control. So in most cars if you press and hold that button for a few seconds it will disable traction control and stability control. So it will give you complete control over the car and its handling. So I would only recommend that you do this if you actually know what you're doing and you want the car to have no stability control and no traction control. So perhaps you're on a track and these systems are slowing up your track times. Or maybe you're driving in adverse weather conditions and again, those systems are restricting your ability to control the car. And in those situations, it would make sense to turn those systems off completely. I know that in some cars, you think you've turned it off and it tells you you've turned it off, but it will reactivate those safety systems after a period of time, or if it detects that the car is getting into trouble. So it's a little bit frustrating. I personally, would insist that car manufacturers give some credit for intelligence on the part of the drivers. I can totally understand why they don't when you see the quality and standards of driving out there. But it makes sense, doesn't it, to allow your driver to turn these systems off if they know what they're doing. If they've made a deliberate effort to disable these systems, I just feel it's a bit off if they keep being reactivated in the background. It's clever, isn't it? With technology, you can improve on the potential physics of cornering a car you've got a metal box with four wheels and just by employing these clever electronic controls and devices it can corner at a much faster rate than it otherwise would have done and cars like the Nissan GTR are just phenomenal the way they distribute the power in cornering and giving the driver supreme control and feedback so they can make the adjustments necessary to catch the oversteer or the understeer as it happens it's a testament to modern engineering so I hope that's been informative to you. We've got lots of other videos scheduled to help you get the best out of your car to really enjoy your driving. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and throw us up a like because that really helps us to get out there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.